Welcome and thank you for standing by. All lines are in a listen-only mode until the question and answer sessions. At that time, please press star 1 and record your name as prompted. Today's conference is being recorded. If you have any objections, you may disconnect at this time. I would now like to turn today's meeting over to Stephen Buckner. Thank you. You may begin. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I uh, hope everyone is doing well and staying healthy. Uh, again, this is Stephen Buckner. I'm the Assistant Director for Communications uh, at the Census Bureau, and really thrilled to be here with my colleagues and the National Partnership Program uh, who have been working hand-in-hand -hand with you uh, for many, many months and, and for some of you over, over the last year or two. Uh, first, I wanted to start by just saying thank you. Uh, you know, when the census came around, we rely so much on our partners to help us get the word out, to be that trusted voice uh, across the, the various communities that you touch. And, and without you, we couldn't do the census uh, and get it nearly as accurate as we, we'd like to get. So we really want to thank you first off. Uh, and certainly with uh, this census, uh, which has been unlike any other, uh, where we've had to stop and pause and replan. Uh, and get back out there and start trying to get people excited about uh, responding again. Uh, we thank you again because, uh, you know, we couldn't have planned this, uh, you know, but we feel like we're in a really good position from an operational standpoint, uh, in large part because of the feedback that you provided us and certainly the flexibility that you've afforded to us uh, in terms of taking these pause to make sure it's healthy and safe for everyone to respond. So uh, thank you again for all of your hard work. Uh, we're not done yet. The census isn't over, but we're extremely pleased with where the response rate has been, uh, particularly uh, via the online response option. Uh, nearly over 80% of those responses that we have gotten have come from the online 2020census.gov uh, response site. Uh, and to me, that's just fantastic. It exceeded our expectations. Um, and certainly, we've had some challenges trying to get uh, some of our mail operations out and up into rural areas to do update leave. But we've gotten that out there now, so everybody should have already gotten some form of notification from the Census Bureau to go ahead and respond, and that's what we're sort of focusing on right now. Uh, this call comes at a really good time to really emphasize how important uh, you know, the response rates are to local communities nationally, but also sort of some of the tools that we've helped draft to help you get the word out, to help uh, issue challenges across your various uh, populations that you serve or that are customers uh, so that you can try to keep a little bit of an excitement about the census because as, as it drags on through the summer, uh, it's going to be pretty soon that people are going to start to receive those, those knocks at the door, and we want to make sure everybody has ample opportunity to go ahead and respond. And certainly, unlike the other censuses, uh, just because we start our non-response follow-up or our follow-up operation doesn't mean you just still can't respond on your own via online, phone, or mail. And so that's going to be a real big difference. We do expect to see a bump in the national response rate once we make our first round of visits. We've seen that in all of our tests. Uh, so we'll really be excited to see that uh, couple percent increase. Uh, but whatever we do now really does make a difference, not just on the accuracy and the data quality side, but also just in terms of making sure we get every single person counted. Uh, so we've got a pretty busy agenda today where you're going to be walked through what is the 2020 Census Response Rate Challenge, um, you're going to get a demo of the map uh, and how we've set up rankings to where you can zoom into different communities by geography and see how you're doing. You can then compare that to some of your 2010 uh, response rates to see how you are from 10 years ago and use that sort of as a benchmark. So I encourage you not, uh, to sort of take a look at some of the materials we've drafted. Uh, we think they will be very useful to where you can sort of plug and play across all of your digital channels. Uh, to help increase awareness about the census is still going on and that we still need everybody to participate. Uh, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and just turn it over uh, to uh, Jenna, who I think is going to walk through uh, a little bit more about the overall uh, response rate challenge, the toolkits, the mini guides, and the other materials that we have. But uh, just yet again, thank you very much. Uh, we're really excited to be here uh, to get this moving again, uh, and we can't wait to see how well uh, we can get people to respond over the next two months. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much, Stephen. Um, my name is Jenna Sauber. I'm part of Team YNR supporting the Integrated Communications Campaign with the Census Bureau. And the Response Rate Challenge has been a really exciting project that I've been able to support. And we're excited to have all of you today 
to help us continue the momentum via the response rate challenge. Um, the response rate challenge is not new to the 2020 census. Um, we did a form of it in 2010, and then it was kind of marched to the mailbox, right, when that was um, the, the primary form of responding to the census. Now that there are three ways and there are so many more activities and engagement from partners and local stakeholders, um, the response rate challenge this time around, we wanted to make it bigger and bolder. Uh, with our toolkits and resources and ideas. And as Stephen mentioned, we did hit a little bit of a hiccup with uh, COVID-19. So we have a couple of versions of the, the toolkits uh, for the response rate challenge. But I want to start first just by going over what the idea and concept is around a response rate challenge. Um, and that's to challenge every city, town, and state to maximize their response rate. And that's by using the map, which we'll go over a little bit more later, but using the map and the rankings dashboards to check out how your community is doing. How is your state doing, your city, your county, down to census tracts to figure out what's our current self-response rate. And again, that's only people responding on their own. That does not include group quarters or other operations that are happening. And again, we want to do we want to encourage people to respond on their own as much as possible prior to census takers hitting the street. Um, so initially, you know, we had launched the response rate challenge back in March to begin before census day and kind of start the, the, the momentum then. And we are encouraging people to check out their 2010 rate. How did you do in 2010? Could you match those rates? Can you surpass those rates? Can you um, create bigger goals beyond that. Um, so we had kind of two components to it of a direct challenge. Hey, you know, town X, see if you can match our 2010 rate or surpass it. Or challenge a neighboring community in a friendly competition to improve everyone's response rate. Because when everyone's response rates improve, um, there are more benefits for everyone to share. And so that could be a, a mayor to mayor, that could be college town to college town, and when partners um, help out, it, you know, maybe it's chapter to chapter or, um, you know, regional competition. Um, so this is where we look to our partners to kind of take the response rate challenge um, and, and tailor it for how it would work with your chapters around the country. Um, in the Motivate Your Community column, that's where, you know, it's, of course, continuing to educate people. How do you respond to the census? Why it's important? Um, and then coming up with fun incentives and awards to uh, motivate people to participate. And then sharing all of the the resources and your challenge on social media, with local media, um, with other partners, your website, email newsletters, et cetera. So all the things that you've already been doing to promote the 2020 census, but taking that, taking the response rate challenge in as part of it and posting on um, your website and social media and things like that. So now I want to talk about the resources that we created around the response rate challenge, the toolkit, and then the new mini guide. So the toolkit we created earlier this year, and that was meant to help guide people through the process of setting up a challenge. And that's the planning, that's some sample scenarios, that's preparing for it, um, and executing on it. And then how do you also celebrate? And then what are all the resources you can use? So the Response Rate Challenge Toolkit, um, there are a few updates in that to reflect kind of changes in the operational timeline. Um, but, the, but the gist of the Response Rate Challenge is all still in the toolkit there. Um, again, what is the challenge as we just discussed, kind of the important time, timeline, the two concepts of challenging your community versus challenging another community. And then what does it take to plan it? Coming up with the goal, um, coming up with who you might be challenging, 
um, coming up with the incentives, figuring out your timing, and um, how do you involve partner or other partner organizations, local businesses, um, what are activities that you can do? And then how do you spread the word? So the, the mini guide was something that we came up with, again, to reflect the impact of COVID-19. And we wanted to ensure that um, organizations still had creative ways to conduct challenges with their communities given the COVID-19 environment. So activities that would be safe um, under social distancing protocols, other state, local health guidelines. And so the mini guide was really meant to kind of be a refresher, an overview. Here's what the response rate challenge is. Um, and then here's some new ideas. And we have some examples that are included in the ideas that um, can be modeled. So there has been kind of a, a slew of these community parades happening around the country where, um, you know, ambulances and, first, you know, first responders, community leaders, mayors, kids are riding these parades um, to show support of the community and for the community to show support of them. And there have been instances as well of even census parades happening in communities around the country. Um, and then the city versus city, county versus county challenge that we included in the mini guide, this could be a great opportunity to take that and tailor it for partners. So chapter versus chapter, branch versus branch, region versus region. Um, and so that's a great chance to, you know, you can keep it really local, you can do it regional across the country, however that works for you. Um, so all of the ways that we are promoting the challenge to kind of local governments and, and community leaders, the same thing can happen with partners to help engage everyone and to work with those um, local governments and trusted leaders as well. Um, you know, there's other ideas in here about virtual community gatherings. I'm sure everyone um, either participated in or heard about these different, you know, concerts and um, virtual challenges and meetups and touch parties and you name it. There's all kinds of things um, that have been going on over Instagram or Facebook Live um, or other kind of virtual platforms. And so that's a fun way that you could come up with um, a, a challenge or activity related to the census for your community um, and do that virtually. And so there's, you know, there's just a few ways in here that we hope will inspire people to come up with their own challenge um, in this environment and to keep the momentum going. Um, and that's, that's really what what the what the guide and the toolkit offer, and again, all the resources, other toolkits, fact sheets, one pagers, and I know we'll talk about that a little bit more in a second. But those are the two big resources related to the toolkit and the the response rate challenge. And Hi, everybody. Uh, yep. Hi, my oh, name is yeah. Christina Over Store. <laughs> Got it. Yep, this is Christina Storr. I'm the Chief of the Web and New Media Branch. Thank you so much, Jenna, um, for walking through that. Um, I'm really excited to be able to speak to the partners today and to be able to give you a walkthrough of some of the tools to really help you facilitate a challenge. So um, we're going to walk through uh, the response rate map itself. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of an overview of the web page on 2020census.gov um, where these materials live just to help you navigate. And then we'll wrap up my part and do some questions and answers after you take a look at the rankings dashboard. Um, so to start off, I wanted to highlight uh, the actual response rate map. Um, this is really a fun and easy way to visually navigate and find the 2020 census response rates for your area. Um, Hopefully you can all kind of see uh, here on this image on the slide, I definitely encourage you to go out and uh, you know, navigate around the map. 
uh, whether you're on a mobile device or a desktop device um, after this call. Um, but I'm going to give you a little bit of a lay of the land of the map itself. So at the top, um, you'll notice two uh, numbers. Uh, it defaults to the national uh, self-response rate. Uh, this was taken yesterday. It was 61.9%. Um, and then over to the right, you'll see Alabama. It defaults to Alabama being the uh, first state alphabetically. Um, so you'll have the national and the, uh, the state rate right, right there. Uh, moving below that, you'll see uh, the outline of the U.S. Uh, color-coded. Um, below that, you'll see the legend showing uh, kind of the buckets of uh, response rates, uh, percentages, and the colors that they adhere to to kind of help you navigate the map um, and know that, you know, we're moving from the red tones to the blue tones uh, as we progress through and uh, gather more self-response rates. Below that, um, just a timeline showing uh, kind of how we have done that progression since uh, mid-March uh, up till today. Um, and then the right side panel, um, at the very top right corner, you'll see uh, that icon. Um, that is where if you want to embed or share uh, the map, that is where you would go uh, to do that on that little um, the share icon up at the top corner. Um, below that, you'll see an I. This is our quick info button. Um, it offers some tips and tricks on how to navigate the map. Um, so that is always a good resource if this is your first time coming to it or uh, if you have some questions. Um, below that, those drop downs are pretty self explanatory. It, it defaults to the uh, Today's date, uh, this screenshot was taken yesterday. Um, and then you can then select the mode. Um, and that is where you would select uh, the total, which is uh, the total of self-response rates for internet, paper, and phone. Or you can also go in if uh, you want to do a challenge or if you have questions about just folks that have, um, have self-responded online. Um, and so that is really cool that you, you can toggle between the two to see the total or just the internet self-responses um, being a digital census that we're in. Um, below that, select a state, very self-explanatory. And um, once you do select a state, it will zoom to that state, and then you can really get to the fun stuff and dive into whatever level of geography uh, that you're interested in, whether it's county, city, congressional district, um, and if you're in a state that does have towns and townships, uh, that will uh, be available to you, or you can go by tribal areas. Um, so that's just the real big navigation overview for this. Um, when you are hovering and navigating around the map, I know Jenna alluded to this, uh, but you can um, say you're hovering on a state or a certain geography, you will see the 2020 census self-response rate, and you'll also see um, in that hover uh, what the 2010 uh, total response rate was. So that's uh, a pretty cool feature that you're able to do that comparison. I think that Stephen had alluded to as well, um, another piece of the challenge, just to know where you were 10 years ago and to try to beat that as well. So um, we could go ahead and go to the next slide. Um, and these two images here are actually captured from 2020census.gov slash response dash rates. Um, just wanted to kind of give you a lay of the land of the web page that uh, the response rate map lives on um, and some of the other cool features on that page. Um, and if you look at the image that's over to the left um, from 2020census.gov, uh, the navigation that says get the facts. Um, it is right there highlighted where it says response rate. So that is the easiest way to get to this page to find um, the mini guide, the toolkit, the map itself, um, any information um, on how to, uh, you know, collect the data to really facilitate a challenge for your chapter, your region, um, any, anything that could support uh, partners in this venture. Um, a lot of folks have asked about other ways to get the data. Um, or historical data, you know, uh, to kind of capture that. Below the map on the web page, um, you'll see this sentence that I've kind of called out here. Uh, there's a screenshot of it. Um, you can tap into our API. Um, if you have someone on your team that uh, is a developer or is able to tap into that. Um, another way, you can access the data via a CSV file. So you could uh, 
click this link and it'll prompt you to download a, a CSV file and you could capture the response rates that way and, you know, tie them to a region or a chapter if you'd like. Um, if there are technical questions, we do have a technical documentation area. Um, a lot of this is from our statistical area just to highlight what is encompassed in the response rates and how they are calculated. Um, if there's some technical questions there, that is the best place for it. Um, and we have added a frequently asked questions uh, sheet uh, just to kind of sum up uh, some of the things that we've heard from folks using the map, and we've just kind of collected some of those uh, FAQs and made them available for other folks. Um, if there are still additional questions, uh, response rate map at census.gov is an email address that is actively monitored. Um, we're happy to answer any questions, um, whether it's functionality or a detailed data question or even a geography question. We have uh, a mix of folks on the team that are happy to help. Um, the, the map is updated every day by 3 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, yes, we're definitely happy to help. We've had over, over 1.3 million page views since March 1st. So it's a really exciting thing um, to see uh, folks interested in it. And we're really excited to see the, that uptick when people are really uh, invested in the challenge. Um, we can go ahead to the next slide. Just to give you another view of how to collect these response rates against a facilitated challenge, this is our response rates ranking dashboard. Um, this is a lot of the same data that is available in the map, um, but it uh, presents it in a rankings table, which is a lot of fun and, uh, you know, it definitely helps facilitate a challenge. Um, it's available at this state, county, and city level. Um, and this screenshot here is directly from that dashboard. The national response rate, that total in internet and daily change up in the top left corner, that is static, that stays throughout your experience with it. Um, but the best feature of this, my favorite feature, is when you select a state from that state selector along the left rail, um, that ranking by county and ranking by city, they dynamically change. Um, so uh, for partners, chapters, regions that are really interested in uh, fueling a challenge, this is an easy way to kind of see those top 10 counties within a state or top 10 cities within a state. Um, the default view uh, gives an overview at the national level. So this shows uh, the top two bars, the ranking by state and the household responses by state. Um, this is the approximate number of households within a state that have responded. Um, and if you want to kind of hone in on a challenge or, uh, you know, keep it to where you're looking at cities or counties that have um, a similar population, there is a toggle there where you can uh, toggle the population range. Um, and below the select a state area, you can uh, select city or city and township or townships um, themselves if you live in a state that does have uh, townships. So definitely a great way to kind of view it and having that top 10 uh, feels very, uh, very much like a sports and uh, friendly competition. Um, so I can go ahead and pause here um, and we could open the line for questions if there are any. I'm keeping an eye on the chat as well. Um, operator, please let me know if there are any questions and I'm happy to field those. Thank you. We'll begin a question and answer session at this time. If you do have a question or a comment from the phones, it is star one. Make sure your phone is unmuted and record your name to introduce your question. And you may press star two to withdraw that request. Again, for questions or comments from the phones at this time, please press star one and record your name. And we'll stand by for any questions or comments. One moment, please. And again, as a reminder, for any questions or comments from the phones, it's star one and record your name and star two to withdraw that request. And we'll stand by for any questions or comments. And I'm currently showing no questions or comments from the phones. Okay, thank you very much. And yeah, I don't see any in the chat as well. Um, and if there are any questions or comments, uh, again, we actively monitor the response rate map at census.gov email box. So uh, happy to follow up after this uh, or you know, have any chats about it if there are some technical questions about the tools to facilitate the challenge. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and pass it over to Robin Bachman to continue with the rest of the presentation. 
Thanks, Christina. Um, I hope everyone's doing well. Um, and I, let me just make sure, can folks hear me? Yep, we can hear you, Robin. Thanks. Great, thank you. Uh, so next slide, please. I just wanted to add my thanks uh, that Stephen offered to all of our national partners. Uh, you've been amazing to work with, and we're super excited to do an additional push to get self-response as high as we can before we turn to non-response follow-up. And then during non-response follow-up, help to educate the public about the fact that we will have census takers in the field um, finishing the enumeration. We are at about 1,115 national partners, and so just we're excited to um, have you uh, join us today, and thank you for everything you're doing to help get a complete and accurate count. So this slide just tries to detail some of the ways that as partners you might be able to do a response rate challenge. Um, we're all very uh, different in your organization. I know some of you serve um, children's audiences, you do advocacy for different community groups, um, you lend your voice around uh, civil rights and um, working in the community space on many, many issues. So, but we wanted to just give some examples of how you might, um, um, as appropriate to your community and to your members, um, consider doing a response rate challenge. And I know some of you have been using the map and the tools already, but we wanted to take this opportunity since we had put together that mini, mini guide to um, just offer this briefing to give you some suggestions and maybe we could talk after this next couple of slides to see if you have any questions on um, how you might do a response rate challenge. So uh, if you could think about, if you're up for it, um, trying to motivate your membership, your audience, your employees um, with the challenge. And so uh, Christina did a great job of stepping you through the tool. And so uh, many of us just love to dig into that data. So if you want to see how your different parts of your organization um, are doing as far as um, if they're in a city or a county, and then compare it to another city or a county or even state, I think, um, that might be fun um, and it might be something that uh, your employees or your members or your audiences would enjoy. We've been loving the idea of chapter challenges, so um, if there's a chapter challenge that you want to undertake, um, we, we uh, love the, the notion of doing a chapter challenge. Um, the other thing you could consider is maybe challenging another partner in your network to see how, um, how uh, their part of the country is doing and see if we could do a little friendly competition to get, um, to get our response rate up. Um, or maybe partner with another trusted voice or a local ambassador. Partners are so often a trusted voice, and we have, um, we've done great as far as getting the response to almost 62%, but we're not done. And so the self-response phase that we're in right now is critical. We would like to try to get it as high as possible before we send our census takers out to finish the count. And partners like you who are trusted voices who talk one-on-one -on -one or in small groups with um, audiences who might still be a little skeptical or wondering why it's important to fill out the 2020 census or is it safe to fill out the 2020 census, it's your voice that will matter and can make all the difference. And so these are just other bullets and ideas as far as how you might get the word out to do a little bit of a challenge. The social media is always a fun way to do it, email blasts. If you have an intranet at work, um, maybe post something on your intranet if you have a really big employee base. Um, also, incentives are always fun. I know it really depends on the partner and their ability, but if you have any incentives, that's always a fun way to try to encourage um, a challenge. And then as Christina and Jenna step through, you can easily track how your area is doing. So you don't have to get all the way down to the track level to do um, a sense of uh, how your areas are doing. But, but if you do want to go um, to that level of geography, the, the tool does allow for that. Um, and then there's just additional ideas around media graphics. And actually, why don't we go to the next slide so that'll help with that. Okay. So here are some resources, and I know you work with National Partnership often, so I bet, um, I bet you're on these pages already, but we just wanted to flag for you that on 2020census.gov forward slash partners, that's where we put all of our outreach materials. 
including our videos, our toolkits, our one-pagers, our half-pagers, et cetera. And flagging on the left-hand side here, I just wanted to mention, we do have some sample drop-in messages. So that way you don't have to start from scratch when it comes to thinking through um, some messages to your, your different audiences. We have some social media um, elements that are posted, and we've been posting those throughout the um, campaign. So we, uh, we have current ones up there as well. And then we have specific web badges for a response rate map. So if you wanted to put something very specific to a response rate challenge, if you visit that link, um, you'll get the badges. And then we have some additional information around self-response. You've heard us throughout this presentation talk about the importance of self-response, and it is paramount, especially in this time of COVID-19 to try to make sure that we get the self-response as high as possible because we do want a full and accurate count. And this um, presentation we will share out to everyone who logged in today so that you can take it back to your organization and share it and also use these links. Next slide, please. Okay, I was gonna do a little bit of an operational update. I'll try to um, go through this on the quick side and if there's questions, we can take them. So we've been sharing throughout uh, the 2020 census operations how, um, how we're doing with the timeline. And we did have to uh, shift some of the timeline because of the pandemic. Our census day was April 1st, but we paused a lot of our field operations at the beginning of the pandemic so that we could assess how we were gonna proceed with the in-person components of the work. Um, all our area census offices have restarted those by um, June 11th. Um, we slowly, um, on a phased basis, started to reopening as the data was showing that places were okay to open. Update Leave is an operation that we do for very rural parts of the country and that has been completed. That is about 4% of the country, but it's for areas that don't have um, addresses right at their door, and so our census workers go and drop a packet off at those households, and that too was a phased approach to go um, into, the, into the areas to get those packets dropped off. And we started those up again, and we have recently completed the update leave field operations. Census offices have resumed hiring um, for more than 500,000 temporary employees. If you happen to have a chance to catch the operational press briefing that just occurred, Tim Olson gave an update on our hiring, and it's going well. We have a lot of folks in the queue, so that with, so far it's looking like we will be able to hire the census takers we need to do um, non-response follow-up. Uh, in addition to our non-response follow-up, we have some um, special procedures that we do for um, different uh, communities. So one major one is group quarters. And we just put out an announcement on um, that we are going to um, resume uh, July 1 to September 3rd uh, group quarter up, um, enumeration. And so for that, those are folks who live in like skilled nursing or nursing homes, also persons who live in prisons, uh, uh, women religious, so sisters and priests who live um, in community settings. So all those uh, group quarters facilities, that enumeration has kicked off again. And we're encouraging e-response for those group quarters. And that had already started April 2nd, but e-response is one of the ways, but then there are other um, ways that we can do that enumeration. If you have questions about group quarters, um, why don't you send them to us afterwards and we can connect, connect you for those. But we, are, we have started um, group quarters again. One of the other components of group quarters is service-based enumeration. So that's how we count persons experiencing homelessness. And we would have um, sent you, uh, I bet you got it already, an update that we're gonna do that operation later in September, September 22nd to the 24th, I believe. And so that's where we go into the um, soup kitchens or the scheduled mo mobile food vans, and we do that en enumeration. We worked with service-based um, organizations to determine when to do that particular operation uh, because we originally would have done that around Census Day, but because of COVID-19, we did have to move that date. 
As we've all mentioned, non-response follow-up is coming up. Um, August 11th is the nationwide uh, day for us to um, have our census takers go into the field and start knocking on doors to those households that haven't responded to the 2020 census. You will see um, some messaging from us, and I think they mentioned it even today, that we'll do a soft launch of non-response follow-up, and that's where we start um, the middle of this month, actually, where we will start to do um, some non-response follow-up in areas um, that uh, the data show that the testing is okay as far as the um, number of cases, and that will allow us to make sure that we uh, can do non-response follow-up completely in August 11th. Um, our descending operations team often does a soft launch of their major operations, and so the vast majority of folks will start to see their census taker uh, the week of August 11th and afterwards, but there is a small part of the country that will um, have that soft launch. And as a reminder, um, we have self-response open all the way to October 31st. So even during non-response follow-up, um, and the, a respondent may uh, go online and fill out their form even when non-response follow-up is happening. So that's a little different this time around this decade, but just wanting to make sure that folks know that. And then we mentioned here October 11th, the deadline to respond to the census, and we will we'll have concluded our enumeration operations um, by October 31st. Uh, October 31st, so both um, self-response will close and then non-response follow-up will close by then. So let's go to the next slide. I think it's the Q&A slide. Thank you, Haley. So it looks like, uh, Christina, we have some questions that have come into the chat box. Should we start there? Okay. Yeah, that, yeah, that works for me. Sorry, Robin, had to get okay. myself off mute. I, I can see some of the chat. Um, I see one about uh, the benefits of self-response versus having census takers. and. Um, I do know that self-responding is the fastest, safest, easiest way to respond to the census. I don't know if there's anything to add there, Robin, um, from the national partnership perspective. No, it's a great question. And as partners, if you could try to help, uh, self-response is um, it's also, uh, we'd love to hear from the person to do self-identification. So self-response is always a way that we would prefer um, folks to go online, although they will also be able to do self-identification when the census taker is at their door. Um, Cost-wise, it's also um, for the overall budget of the census, it is also a savings. But either way, we will do the enumeration, but we, we during, especially during this time with um, COVID-19, we encourage everyone to try to self-respond now um, from the safety of their home, and it's easy to do, and we have um, three different modes. So that's the other thing that partners could really help us get the word out. So the online option is really helpful for so many, but it doesn't fit for everybody. And so please uh, feel free to share out the phone number that people can, do, can use to enumerate. That is a way for um, respondents who don't have online options to do the form, and it's really easy to do by phone. And there's some language options there too when it comes to um, being able to do it by phone. And we can share out that link on the language um, phone numbers for how to do the form. And then the third way um, beyond um, talking to the census taker directly is the form. So we would have mailed the 2020 census questionnaire to all the households who didn't respond yet. So if folks still have that sitting around, they can fill that out and get it, and get it sent in to us. And we'd encourage everyone to do that. So hopefully that helped with that question. Let's see. There are some American Indian areas that we are still doing update leave and a few who still have not allowed us to enter the tribal lands. Thanks, Steve, for that clarification. Our update leave slide bullet there was a little um, rosy, I guess. I apologize if I um, implied that we were completely done. So thank you, Dee, for that clarification. And then let's see, will volunteers be able to make phone calls instead of being census takers? I know some who want to help but aren't comfortable going into people's homes. Dr. Connolly, um, and let me repeat that question and see if anybody else who's um, part of the panel wants to help me answer that one. Will volunteers be able to make phone calls instead of being some census takers? I know some, I know someone who wants to be helpful but aren't comfortable going into people's homes. So our census takers aren't volunteers. 
Um, let's see. And so volunteers or partners can encourage, either through texting or individual phone calls, to encourage their network or their family members to fill out the form. That's definitely one way to um, increase response and to encourage response. We um, will not go into people's homes as census takers. We will um, socially distance and we will have PPE to do that enumeration. And so, um, so you should feel rest assured that um, we are not going to send census takers into the homes, but we will send them to the door. Let me pause to see if anybody else who's part of the panel wants to add any, any um, answer to that. This is Christina. Robin, I think you covered it. Um, and I see Dr. Connolly looks like um, there was some appreciation for that response. So I think you nailed it. Thank you. Um, Christina, do you want to cover the next one and see um, who on our panel can answer? Yeah, yeah. Um, so the next question is, people with disabilities are often overlooked in the census process. Although the online option would be very helpful for some people with disabilities, is there any other accommodations to ensure they are counted? Um, I know from a web perspective and materials that we have on 2020census.gov, I know there is a fact sheet about um, responding and uh, addressing folks with disabilities. So maybe after this, we could circulate that with the partners. Um, anybody else? on the panel um, have any feedback for this one or any other ways that um, there is outreach? No, and thanks, Bridget, for that question. Um, we really appreciate all of our disability rights groups who've um, added their voice to help spread the word about the importance of filling out the 2020 census. So the online option, the phone option might be helpful also depending on the um, community because there is the um, um, TTY line also for um, for persons who would want that line by phone. And then the paper questionnaire is helpful um, also for certain uh, members of the community as well. There is also a Braille guide. And so if, Bridget, um, you would like copies of that, we can um, work with our, our outreach team to make sure that we can get some Braille guides out. We've distributed those through a number of our partners. And then the library, some of our libraries are also helping to get the guide out. But yeah, we're ha happy to, um, to share out what we have, because it has been um, a community that we want to make sure and gets the word about the importance of being counted and that um, it's uh, accessible, the form is accessible. Anyone else want to add anything to that question and reply? Jenna, um, I think that really covers it, and I just wanted to note um, just one more thing from the accessibility handout that was mentioned, um, that people can also request a visit from a census taker who uses American Sign Language. Um, so that's one option in addition to the various online and phone options um, depending on your ability. Thanks, Jenna. So, Operator, I think those are all the questions in our queued. Would you open it up to see if anybody has a question by phone? Thank you. At this time, if you do have any questions or comments, you may press star 1. Please unmute your phones and state your first and last name when prompted. Again, that is star 1 for any questions or comments. At this time, I am showing no questions. Um, thank you, Operator. It looks like we have another one in from Alex. Let's see. We are looking to launch a digital marketing campaign through our different social media platforms. Is there a way to track the effect our campaign is having on response numbers? Ooh, that's a good question. Um, so I'm going to see if Jenna or Christina wants to try to help me answer that one. Um, this is Christina. Yeah, I can uh, jump in here. Yeah, this would probably be something that we'd want to take offline and we can connect uh, through Robin. Um, but yes, there is. Uh, there have been ways in the past where we've uh, coordinated with partners uh, to kind of understand what type of outreach or um, what kind of campaign you're doing. And um, we've been able to kind of take a look at our analytics and see um, referrals from a website or things like that. So. Um, couple questions here that we might have um, to connect offline through the National Partnership Program and our uh, web and new media branch, but it is definitely something that we have done in the past. 
Thanks, Christina. And Alex, thanks for that question. It's a fine line for us to find um, because obviously Title 13 and confidentiality are, um, are paramount and our lodestar in our work, and so we won't do anything that somehow um, um, would imply that we're uh, helping uh, identify respondents, but there are ways that we could probably um, think through that might be uh, able to do what Christina just said. So thank you for that question. Any other questions from the participants? And once again, that is star one if you would like to ask a question. Well, I think we've covered all of our content, and I really appreciate everyone for jumping on uh, this afternoon on our briefing. Um, Haley, did, are you on um, mic? Can you sort of step through what we're going to share out afterwards to everyone who joined us today? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this is um, recorded and being transcribed. So we will be sending out a recording that also will have subtitles for some of our disability rights partners as well uh, so that this presentation itself can be shared. We're also going to share the slide deck as a PDF, so any of the links that were used um, and referred to during, as well as the email addresses that were referred to, uh, will all be sent. Um, and we will send that to the participants and also through um, some of our partners that could not join us today to make sure that everybody is abreast of this challenge. Thank you, Haley. And thanks, to everyone, for joining us today. And we're hoping that we uh, planted some ideas to see if we can get some challenges going. This is an important month for us. July, we're doing a major communications push to try to encourage self-response. So if you can join us in that push, it will really help um, with the 2020 census. Thank you again. And thank you. This concludes today's conference. You may go ahead and disconnect at this time.